Okay, let's get started here. Uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, business and legal studies programs uh, here at Penn Foster, and we're uh, doing this during our open house week. Um, I'm uh, Russell Day, and I'll be the presenter, or the first presenter, and then uh, uh, Jim uh, Bersicki will be our, our a presenter and he'll talk about some of the business programs but first before we get started let's do a little housekeeping up in the uh, right hand corner you're going to have a console um, with an arrow and if you click on that arrow that will uh, minimize the console if you click on the arrow again and it'll open up the console um, you also have a questions box and we encourage you to um, you know, ask as many questions as you want. Feel free to do that throughout the webinar. We'll stop periodically and, uh, you know, try to answer uh, some of your questions. Um, and uh, I guess with that, let's just get started. And there we go. Oop, let's back up here a second. Okay, so here's our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, why you would want to select Penn Foster um, and, uh, uh, you know, what, what are some of the uh, things that are, are benefits of uh, taking a program with us. Um, we're going to also talk about what you uh, can expect uh, from a program at Penn Foster um, and what, uh, what you know, what things uh, are gonna be useful to you, um, how are the programs kind of laid out, uh, and, uh, you know, give you an idea uh, as best we can uh, of what, uh, you know, you would see if you enrolled in one of our programs. Um, and then we're gonna take a look at the business programs uh, and talk about them. We have quite a few business programs. Uh, in uh, our selection, we have both college, career, and uh, uh, single course programs um, and certificates. So we have a wide variety of programs. We're not going to go through every program with you, um, but uh, you know, you you uh, may uh, once you've gotten through listening to this uh, uh, webinar feel free to go out to our website and take a look at all the programs that we offer. Um, we're also going to take a look at the legal and criminal justice programs. There's a smaller selection there, but we have a, a strong selection of programs, uh, paralegal and uh, criminal justice and other programs, uh, both at the uh, uh, college level and the career level. Uh, and then if uh, we have any questions at that point, uh, we'll be happy to, to uh, answer them. Um, as I said, though, feel free to ask questions as you go through the program or as we go through the, uh, the webinar and uh, we'll try to answer them as best we can. So uh, my name is Russell Day and I'm the chairperson of the business and legal studies area here at Penn Foster. I've been with Penn Foster for uh, about uh, 20, three years, I think, uh, and uh, uh, I've been uh, the chairperson in the business and legal studies area for about 15 of those years. Um, and I oversee uh, all the instructors uh, in the business and legal studies area and uh, uh, oversee content and, uh, you know, uh, how we uh, help service our students. Um, so today, um, we're going to start with uh, why Penn Foster. So, um, you know, if you're thinking about Penn Foster, um, what are some of the benefits of uh, enrolling with us? And one of them is the flexibility. Um, and, and, you know, for a long time, I've heard from students uh, uh, in various programs um, that, you know, they, they love Penn Foster because it's flexible. Um, because it can adapt to their schedule. They don't have to be in a classroom uh, on a particular day at a particular time. So um, from that point of view, it works particularly for working adults. Um, you know, I, 
I was just talking to a student probably uh, about uh, six months ago who is uh, working for a, uh, a U.S. oil company in Kuwait in the Middle East, and he was taking our bachelor's degree program, and he was in semester eight, and he was getting to the end of the program, and, you know, he was just telling me that, you know, this is the only way that he was going to be able to get the, uh, the education that he needed. Uh, since then, he's graduated from uh, the bachelor's degree program in business and uh, uh, actually got a promotion. So, um, you know, from a flexible point of view, um, you're not going to find a program that's more flexible than Penn Foster's. Um, our programs are affordable. Um, you know, when you when you look at compare the the uh, tuition for our programs to tuition to other schools and col colleges and career schools, there's no comparison. I mean, ours is, uh, you know, very affordable for students and, you know, we have easy payment plans and things like that. So um, those are things that, uh, you know, students definitely uh, are looking at. Um, you know, it's a self-paced model. So like I said, you don't have to be in a classroom. Um, you're basically uh, completing the work at your own pace. We have some tools that you can use, um, like a study planner, which allows you to set times for when you feel exams could be done. But um, this is, uh, you know, this is basically something where you uh, figure your schedule uh, for completing the work, uh, the reading and the exams and, and whatever else uh, has to be completed. So from that point of view, it fits very well with working adults. It fits very well with people who, uh, you know, we have a lot of people that travel they, uh, for their work or whatever. Um, and they, uh, they love this model because they can still take a course uh, and and do the things that they do in a normal day. They're, they're you know, with their busy schedule. So we have a lot of access to tools and resources. Um, we have a, a, a group of coaching uh, advisors, and I think we had a webinar about them earlier this week. Um, basically, they help coach students through the programs. Um, if you need that, it's available. Um, and then we have all kinds of support as far as faculty and staff, our faculty. Uh, we have uh, over 200 faculty here at the school and uh, off-site. We have adjuncts as well as uh, 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 full-time and part-time instructors. Um, we also have a, a large servicing staff to in our student service area. Um, that uh, handle uh, calls and email and communication with students. So those are all things that help support you getting through the program. And students can contact us uh, by uh, email and phone, uh, either through the, the website, uh, as far as the email is concerned. They can also contact us by chat uh, on the website during business hours. Um, so we have... Uh, people here all the time from, well, from uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, to answer questions and help students with uh, uh, the various uh, lesson materials that they're going through. So we also have a student community um, that's available 24-7, and uh, uh, students uh, can interact with uh, either instructors or staff as well as uh, as uh, other students. So um, there's a lot of support um, for uh, students in our in our program. Um, so what can you expect? All our materials, well, our, we have uh, online lesson materials. Um, for the most part, they're created by experts in the field. Um, Essentially, we have a, a, a lot of the material, particularly in the career school, but also in college, where we um, have experts uh, go through and identify the important things that students need to know for a particular field. Um, and we basically design it for the at-home learner. 
um, someone who is, uh, you know, not able to attend classes at a local college and, uh, you know, they just don't have their, their busy schedule. They don't have the time to, uh, to do that. So, um, so they're designed that way to begin with. Um, there are courses where we have textbooks um, in the, uh, in the programs and um, they, uh, uh, mainly in college, but in some of the career programs, we'll have textbooks as well. So, um, and, and these are usually part, well, they are part of the program. They're included in the tuition, so you don't have to worry about going out and buying books if you're taking a college course or a college program. Um, you know, I just my I just uh, moved my son now to uh, college this week. And uh, the, the bill just for his textbooks was like $700. So, you know, uh, that's almost the cost of one of our whole uh, semesters of a program. So, um, so you know, it, it's a great value because you're getting a, a, uh, a textbook that, uh, it, you know, many colleges use and it's all part of the tuition. Um, we have a variety of resources available to students. We have an online library. Um, that library is a digital library. It has uh, a vast amount of resources uh, that students can uh, access. We have a virtual res uh, reference room. We have a, a writing center. We have a full-time librarian to answer questions. Um, and it's available to all students. So once you enroll, um, you can access that uh, on the uh, portal. Um, and there's a lot of general information in there, but there's also course specific information in there uh, and uh, a variety of uh, resources that you can use um, to maybe you want to find out information about a particular topic or you have a paper to write or you know, uh, there's access to things like magazine articles and things like that that you can find in our, our library. So there's a lot of resources there that you can use and it's easy to search. As I said, we have the student community. This is uh, something you'll actually be able to see if you go to the, the promotional page and go to one of the programs. Um, there's usually a, a link to uh, go out and take a look at uh, the community. You wouldn't be able to um, uh, post to it. However, you can uh, take a look at the community and see what's out there. We have a variety of uh, discussion boards uh, available to students and uh, it's a way to interact with both students and faculty and, and our servicing folks. Um, so we also have, uh, as I said, instructor support. We have that available by telephone, email, and chat. Uh, and that's through the portal. And then, as I mentioned, we have a study planner, which is a guide that we uh, provide to students. It's a tool that they can use um, to um, uh, basically set objectives or set priorities for completing their exams. They can set the date that they wanna uh, complete the exam. They can adjust the date. Um, so there's a lot of things that uh, you can do with the study planner to kind of use that as a guide so that you don't get uh, uh, too far behind on completing a program. Um, you know, as it says here, training that gets you to your goal. Um, you know, we start out with the basics uh, and then we kind of uh, uh, get into more detail. So it kind of eases you into the, the, the lesson material and it's done in uh, a, a way um, that you get small bites. Uh, so, you know, we'll, uh, you, you might have one lesson to complete before you move on. And then that lesson is a short uh, a presentation or a, a, a study guide that uh, basically uh, takes you through a particular topic. And you learn that topic and then you would move on to the next one. So it's short pieces of information that uh, you, you learn as you go through the program. Uh, then we have a, a career servicing area. Uh, we use a company called Career Cruising um, that allows you to uh, explore your interests. Um, there's uh, actually some assessments you can use to identify skills uh, uh, 
ability and and uh, look at particular uh, uh, careers. Um, there's also a job search uh, 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 site in there, which allows you to um, you know search for particular jobs in your area. So uh, we have that as well. Um, I wanted to mention here in the college, uh, we have, uh, and we're actually doing some of this next week, uh, but uh, for the business and criminal justice courses, uh, they have been reviewed by the American Council on Education. Um, and basically they provide a, a recommendation on the, um, on the credit value of the course as compared to other schools. Uh, and the reason this is important is particularly if you take a college course, you want to, if you want to transfer it to another school, you want to have a, a good uh, or, or strong confidence that um, that will transfer. And our uh, the, the reviews that the ACE does, um, basically they'll look at the course, they'll uh, indicate uh, what the credit value equivalents will be. Uh, and uh, then other schools can use that uh, to uh, review the uh, uh, course and decide whether they'll accept it or not. So and a lot of schools use this uh, um, uh, service. Um, so the credit recommendation service is uh, uh, an important difference. We're actually having, I think, 15 courses reviewed by ACE uh, next week, uh, and we'll be getting a report on that. And they post their results on their website, so you can go in at any time and take a look at those results. Um, and then, uh, you know, we uh, we uh, accept transfer credit from other schools uh, in our college, uh, as long as they're accredited. Um, basically, a student would just get a transcript from that uh, college, and then, uh, uh, have it sent to the, the school to be evaluated. So we do that quite often. So at this point, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Jim Versicki. And uh, Jim, why don't you tell him a little bit about yourself and then you can get started. All right. Thanks, Russell. Um, my name is Jim Bursicki, and I've been with Penn Foster now for 17 years as a business instructor. And the reason why said business instructor is because it, instructors kind of like have specialty so you don't just have one instructor like myself that would teach every possible subject uh, we have you know different instructors that teach like for example english composition or any of the english courses we have instructors for the computer courses uh, you know social sciences so no one person does everything um, i focus and there's several other business instructors that focus strictly on the, the business courses in areas, right? But from a high level overview, I kind of want to give you an idea that Penn Foster, if you look at it, is kind of broken down into two areas, college and career, right? So I'm going to take a look at the college first. And if you're looking at this PowerPoint slide, I mean, you can see it has you know, the bachelor's degree, associate degree, undergraduate certificate, and then individual courses. I'm kind of going to kind of start from the bottom and work up because one folds into another, right? So by starting down here at the bottom with individual courses, what that means is that you can enroll in specific subjects, for example, um, right now, I have a student who is doing cost accounting, and on Monday, she's transferring into a master's program, but she can't get into the program until she takes specific subjects. So she actually is taking two subjects with Penn Foster. Um, one of those happens to be cost accounting, and that's why I'm familiar with her situation. So she's taking those individual subjects with us so that she can meet the requirements for like her master's program. So that's one option that you have with Penn Foster. If you need to take you know, individual courses, you can do that. Now, these courses, you know, we have them in business, criminal justice, you know, the finance, accounting, HR, and marketing. But those subjects kind of fold into the next thing, which would be the undergraduate certificate programs in business management, accounting, and human resources. What an undergraduate certificate program is, 
people, they were created mostly for employers who wanted to upgrade their skill sets of their employees without having them spend, you know, a four-year education by sending them to a college and paying for it. So they kind of streamlined the undergraduate certificate programs to kind of focus mainly on the areas of study, like, for example, business management. I mean, to get your bachelor's degree, you're talking about 120 credit hours, and that takes four years at a full-time school. Um, here, with the undergraduate certificate program, you can take more business-specific subjects so that you're not having to t get the entire four years of an education for business management by getting a bachelor's degree. Um, there, it's not to say that only employers can have their employees do this. No, uh, you as an individual, if you opt, you know, in order to upgrade your skill set, I mean, you can take one of these undergraduate certificate programs. You know, so if you're in business management, you know, you'll take things like financial accounting, managerial accounting, organizational behavior, a lot of the business related subjects to round out your business uh, acumen. But it leaves out things like, you know, psychology and the social sciences, um, which are, to be honest with you, I didn't think when I first went to school, I thought, why am I taking speech? All right. Well, the reason why I'm taking speech is because right now I'm doing a presentation. Right. Well, in an undergraduate certificate program, you might not be taking speech, but it is giving you the business uh, knowledge that you need to be able to get into the workplace. And of course, the undergraduate certificate programs are based upon what you find in the business associate degrees. Now, you see them all listed here and there's an awful lot of crossover, especially in the first semesters, um, because what you're talking about is, um, as I like to put it, in the first semester, it's a high level overview. It's the 40,000 foot view. And as you go from semester to semester, you actually start to uh, like peel an onion. You start to go deeper and deeper into the core of the onion, which means you're getting more and more specialized knowledge. So that first semester is, you know, intro principles, all right, the high levels. And therefore, those semesters are, you know, uh, spread out over all of the degrees themselves. But as you get further into your education, you start to specialize in your you know, field of study. For example, um, accounting. You know, you're not going to have intermediate accounting and cost accounting in you know, marketing or retail management, right? But everybody takes financial accounting, which is that uh, beginning intro type of accounting, which everybody kind of like needs for the, uh, the business uh, degrees or even in business themselves. I mean, even I have people say, well, I'm in business management. Why do I take financial accounting? Well, you know, why do I do these things? Well, you know, in the case of financial accounting, you know, the financial statements are the report card for your business. And if you don't have some idea as to what's on it, well, that's how you're being graded in the business world. So, um, yeah, a lot of these, uh, degrees, the first semesters do have the same thing, but as you start to move further and further down the road, you'll start to specialize in specific subjects for retail management and fashion merchandising. Then, of course, um, once you're done with the business associate degrees, um, we only have one degree um, that moves on to the bachelor's degree, and that's in business management. And the reason for that is, is because the vast majority of people you know, go into business management. I mean, to give you some idea, um, when I graduated, uh, there was 476 people in my graduating class, all right? And only 30 of us were accountants, all right? And all of the rest were in business management. And that's why we have the bachelor's degree in business management is because that's the most sought after degree uh, that everyone wants. Now, of course, you know, in that particular degree, you do move on from, you know, uh, the higher, the more in-depth, the higher level uh, subjects uh, to complete throughout your business degree. All right. So that's kind of an overview of what happens in, in the college. And on this slide here, um, you know, this is an example of, you know, many of the subjects, all right. And as I said, a lot of these here subjects um, you'll find in any of the associate degrees because this, um, well, not in any of them. This is specifically business management. I'm sorry about that. But what I was looking at was the first semester. As you can see here, it's broken down into four semesters. And um, 
that first semester is generally in the exact same subjects that you take throughout any of the different curriculums, whether it's business management, accounting, marketing, finance, retail management, or fa fashion merchandising. And that's kind of like good because I know for myself, um, when I first went to college, I actually enrolled in biology. And I found that um, biology was not the area I wanted to be in. And so then I actually transferred over into um, accounting. Well, here, you know, that first semester is kind of like get your feet wet, meaning you're having all of the same subjects. And when you take all of them, you might change your mind. Like maybe, for example, um, you know, you're in uh, business management and for whatever reason you decide you want to, you know, move into marketing instead because you like the, the sales aspect and the, you know, uh, creating promotions and things like this. Well, what happens is, is you're able to transfer from one degree to another, right? And like I said, when you get into the second semester and the third semester and the fourth semester, that's when you start getting into more of the specialized subjects for that field of study. So, in showing you this slide and showing you the business management, even though it's sort of like a template, you know, you'll see on here that you have field of study subjects, you'll have um, core courses, that's the field of study, you'll have um, things like um, the psychology, sociologies that you'll have to take, and social sciences, and you'll also have electives, you know, subjects that you'll be able to pick for yourself that is of interest to you. I mean, like for example, you have art appreciation here in the sec uh, second. Se I'm sorry, in the first semester. But when you go into the second semester, um, you have you know the choices of psychology, world civilization, and sociology. You know, it's what is most interest to you. So, to a certain extent, you are customizing you know what it is that you want from your education. First, by being in a particular curriculum, and then second, you know, choosing whichever uh, subjects that you want, okay? All right, so um, what are, you know, the, the college courses like? Well, um, you'll see that um, what'll happen is you'll, you enroll from semester to semester, and the reason for that is because, you know, just like in a brick and mortar school, you know, when you go to the fall, you enroll in the fall semester, you know, the college doesn't know if you're going to enroll in the spring semester. I mean, it's up to you to enroll, all right? Um, but when you do, whether it's in the fall or in the spring, you know, your subjects are set up pretty much the same way. For us, we have your syllabus uh, of the outline of the course. Now, the word course here is more, uh, is used more akin to the word subject. Like, for example, in the first semester, you're going to have business orientation, information literacy, intro to business, principles of management, art appreciation, and math for business and finance. Those are subjects. And with each one, you're going to have a syllabus, which kind of like explains, outlines what you're going to do with that particular subject. Then you'll move on, as you move into that particular subject, you'll get an online study guide, right? And in most cases, you'll get an accompanying textbook that will be sent to you in the mail. And right now, it, you know, um, we've actually sped up our time to where we're getting those textbooks to you within a week, right? Generally four to five days. And that textbook is of no additional cost to you. It's part of your tuition. So you have this study guide, which is on your, what we call the student portal, where you're accessing the information. And that study guide is like your map for what you need to do with, for that particular subject. What you're going to read in the textbook, any exercises that you need to do and perform, um, if you have projects, uh, things that you need to do, um, you know, it's all in the study guide to kind of like tell you, you know, what you need to do for that subject. And of course, if you're, uh, if you kind of don't understand something or you're not sure about what you're doing, I mean, that's what instructors are here for, right? Um, you know, it's up to you to, you know, give us a call and, you know, ask us and we'll be more than happy to point you in the right direction, help you with the things that you don't understand or, you, or like you're studying and you don't understand some concepts. Well, we'll go over it with you so that you do understand and, you know, get your education. You know, as part of the subjects, you know, you have supplemental material, you know, videos, audios, things like that. Um, but the next thing I want to point out, which I found 
particularly interesting is when it comes to things like multiple choice exams, discussion boards, projects, and final exams, right? You know, that is how um, you kind of like get tested for particular subjects, right? Um, you have discussion boards and what they are, I, I know I skipped over multiple choice exams, but I did that for a reason. Um, I'll cover the discussion boards, the projects, and the final exams first because they're easier. Discussion boards um, are basically here's a topic and you write about it, all right, and then you present it, and uh, you just get a you get a passing or failing grade for it. Projects, a lot of the subjects do have projects, um, not all, but you know uh, it's quite a few, and I mean that's to be expected because that's the application of your knowledge. You know, it's not just about reading a book. Right? It's about can you apply what you're doing, and that's what the projects are for. And of course, you end up having to take final exams. Um, you know, that's for retention. Do you really know the material, or you know, uh, or were you just reading the book and forget it? You know, the next day. All right? um, but the thing about uh, I, I said I skipped over the multiple choice exams because we have what are called randomized multiple choice exams, and most, you know, these are what makes up most of your lesson uh, materials for your exams. I mean, yes, you do have to do the discussion boards, and yes, you'll probably have a project. But when it comes to the multiple choice exams, um, they're open book, they're untimed, and then the nice thing about them is, is you get to retake them to be able to get a higher grade, right? Now, I talked to, you know, when we instituted this policy you know, a while back, a lot of students don't realize that, and um, I know I'm, you know, varying off on a, a separate subject, but I kind of want to highlight it in that there's no downside to retaking an exam, all right? Meaning if you had scored, say, an 85 on the exam the first time, and then you retake it and you get an, an 80, right? Well, you're, we're going to use the higher of the two grades, so there's no downside there. However, if you get the, you know, you retake it and you get a 90 or a 95, that only benefits you, okay? So, um, you know, that's a nice thing that, you know, a feature that we have to, for you to be able to get the highest grades possible, all right? And then the last thing uh, is webinars. I mean, just like this is a webinar, you're going to have some webinars and some courses that you're going to have to attend as uh, required, but that's just part of your normal subject matter, okay? All right, so that's kind of like how college works. Now I want to talk about how um, the career, about the career school, all right? And just somewhat similar to the um, college where you had an undergraduate certificate and then you have the associate degree, well, that's akin towards uh, your college school, I mean, our career school, where we have our diploma programs and our certificate exams uh, programs. Now, these, um, as you can see on the list, um, I'm not going to go down through all of them, but they are kind of like linked together a little bit, all right? And also too, if you start out in the career, you know, you have the opportunity to move over into the college. Like for example, um, you look at bookkeeping and small business management, and there's also the retail supervisor. If we had, if you recall from the previous slide, um, you had, uh, you know, the business management degrees, you had the accounting degree, right? So if you took bookkeeping and you, you know, wanted to go further, right? Well, you can then enroll in the associate degree for accounting. If you were doing the small business management, you know, you can look over here at the certificate programs and you'll see down in the list there, there's starting your own business, right? Even though they're, uh, they're the same subject matter, they perform different functions. And if you wanted to, you can then uh, move on into the uh, act associate degree program for business management and you you finish the associate degree you can go on to uh, the bachelor's degree so there is a track that you can like follow and get continuing education um, but let's just say for example you're doing bookkeeping and you don't really want to um, go and you know get your accounting degree or you don't want to go into you know get a degree from business management. Well, that's where the individual subjects can come into play in that you might want to take the financial accounting subject in order to broaden your perspective of financial accounting when it comes to bookkeeping. So the career programs, um, I know I kind of skipped over this to begin with, but um, these um, programs are 
they're designed to focus on a particular area, all right? And they're designed to teach the basic skills. Just one moment, please. One moment here. I'm having trouble with the uh, yep. change in the slide here. It won't change for me. The heck? Okay. Technical yeah, hold on a moment. We're having a technical difficulty here. I should be able to. There we go. Ah, Boy, we that go. was weird. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't normally happen, you know, in a presentation. But hey, you know, I was. I, I like to, you know, I sit there on the phone, and when I have to transfer a student, sometimes I have to wait because the computer's searching, 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 and you know, you're waiting a few seconds, and and I make a joke saying, you know, it used to be we did this by you know carrier pigeon, but now we're waiting on a computer. Well, you know, these things happen. So um, with the career uh, diploma program, uh, like I said, you know, it's focused on a particular area, all right, and they're designed to teach you the basic skills you need uh, to get in that particular type of job, you know, using bookkeeping as an example. Um, you know, bookkeeping is the data entry for accountants. Um, you know, if you were, let's just say you were, uh, like in my case, I happen to work for um, a hotel and banquet facility and you know I'd see the dishwashers you know they'd be working in the middle of the night after functions were done and you know they you know uh, they made a living but if they wanted to better themselves they can take a program like uh, bookkeeping or maybe even guest service agent or even hotel restaurant management and in order to gain the knowledge to be able to move over into different areas of the hospitality industry and then you know go and climb the ladder by getting the additional education so now the career diplomas you know they generally they're um you know two or three lessons and they're in modules and you might have let's just say i don't know um 15 different lessons um, for a particular uh, diploma program well, the way that's graded is um, you have uh, an, a straight average of all of those lessons together. So if you meet the requirement of 65 or better, you actually get your uh, career development diploma you know, sent to you from us saying that you know, you've completed that uh, particular program. And that's like a third party validation that you have some education. You, know, you go to an employer, you can put that on your resume saying, hey, you know, I've taken this here program. And yeah, Penn Foster is who I went through and they're a third party and you know, I met their requirements. Um, you know, with the career uh, diploma programs, you know, you have the same thing of the multiple choice, randomized multiple choice exams, where you can retake those exams to be able to get higher grades. And you generally also have some projects, uh, you have a project. So if we go to the next slide here, um, this is what um, like the small business management program looks like um, from the program outline. As you can see, there's several different modules um which have the individual lessons in it but then when you get down to the bottom you have uh a creating your business plan and that's the project for this particular program and the projects are kind of created to um reiterate or to you know they they involve everything that you've learned throughout the entire program I mean, in this particular instance, just as an example, you know, a business plan focuses on the areas of marketing, ac uh, accounting, and operations. And you learn something about that, each one of those areas of study from a high level overview, you know, throughout the entire program. And then when you get down to the bottom, you do this business plan, which, you know, gives you that practical application that I had mentioned before of the knowledge and skills that you've you've gained all right throughout the throughout your education all right so um that's just a, that's it for me um you know when we get to the end of the presentation if you have any additional questions I'll field them but right now I'd like to turn it back over to Russell all right and he'll talk to you a little bit about the legal and criminal justice programs okay thanks Jim that was great uh it's a good uh, uh summary of uh, our programs and how they work. Um, we're just going to take a quick look now. You've kind of gotten an idea from Jim how the uh, the business programs work and how college and career works, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about the 
uh, the uh, legal and the criminal justice. We have a, a group of programs here very similar to uh, in how they're organized to uh, what Jim talked about with the business. Um, we have uh, certificate programs in specific areas um, that students can enroll in. We also have a, a career diploma uh, area where things like legal secretary, legal transcriptionist, um, paralegal, which is a popular program, uh, and our private investigator program. Um, I'm going to show you the paralegal um, in a minute, um, but basically uh, from there, many of those will uh, uh, go into the associate degree program. Um, and in the associate degree program, we have two very different programs. One is criminal justice and one is paralegal studies. Um, the criminal justice program obviously uh, focuses on the criminal justice field uh, and, and provides a, a good uh, preparation uh, at an associate degree level. And our paralegal studies uh, program also uh, prepares students to work as a paralegal and actually in the career diploma, we have a paralegal diploma program, which uh, if uh, a student decides once they've completed that to uh, get their associate degree, most of the coursework will transfer into the paralegal studies associate degree program. Um, so it cuts down on a lot of uh, the, the work that, that you have to complete for an associate degree, but then we do, provide some uh, more detailed uh, training in things like uh, trusts and wills and estates, real estate, things like that, those things that are relevant um, to the uh, uh, paralegal. Um, and then we have the bachelor's degree program uh, in criminal justice, and that is a uh, uh, eight semester program that students can take. We have a lot of students in that. Um, actually, we have a lot of students who uh, are in both either the associate degree or the bachelor's degree who are in law enforcement already or in uh, 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 corrections or a field like that where uh, they're, they need to get a degree in order to move up in their, uh, in their organization, in their uh, 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 profession. So um, we see a lot of uh, those students taking particularly the bachelor's degree, but also the associate degree. Um, and uh, that that gives them the training they need uh, in order to uh, get promoted, or a lot of them go on to get a master's degree. Um, and here's a, a sample. This is a criminal justice associate degree, the first three semesters. There is one more semester, but it, it, I couldn't get it all on the screen here. So, um, but that kind of gives you a sense. Uh, again, it's broken down that that first semester, as Jim said, with the business is, uh, you know, a general uh, introductory material, and then you get into more specialized. The criminal justice program tries to uh, uh, cover a range of uh, areas of the criminal justice system um, from uh, law enforcement to corrections to uh, uh, social um, uh, uh, guidance, things like that, um, counseling, uh, things like that. So uh, we try to give students a, uh, a round perspective uh, in the criminal justice program so that they're prepared for a, a, a variety of fields. Um, many of the fields that they go, that you can go into might require additional training beyond a, an associate or bachelor's degree in criminal justice, but this gives you a good base to start with. Um, particularly like if you want to go into law enforcement, usually police have to complete a academy training um, as well. And, uh, you know, this you could take this either before or after completing that, but it helps to prepare you for promotion opportunities in the field. So again, here's a, a paralegal career program, uh, how it's laid out. Um, as Jim indicated, you know, we usually do two or three lessons. You can see here that um, there are some uh, uh, study uh, or uh, some um, instruction packets that are more than that. 
uh, we call them modules, um, and basically uh, the, the paralegal program goes a long way toward preparing somebody to start uh, in a paralegal. Um, it might not uh, get you the training you need to get promoted. For that, you probably need an associate degree to, to do that. But um, generally, this gets a student started in the field uh, with the training they need. And I think that's going to wrap it up. I just want to uh, say thanks for listening. And I want to see if anyone has any questions. I appreciate everybody's time and uh, uh, have a great day.